compound microscope. Objectives To study the construction and working of a compound microscope. To discuss its magnifying power. To understand its various practical applications and uses. We have already studied that a magnifying lens is a simple microscope which is used to magnify small objects into big ones. Just imagine how exciting it would be if we get a device with which we can clearly see the minute objects like cells which cannot be seen with our naked eyes. Well, that is the magic done by a compound microscope. A simple magnifier has limited magnification, but a compound microscope has much more magnification. Now, let us study the compound microscope in detail. We will first study the external construction of the microscope. The compound microscope consists of the eyepiece through which we see the image of the specimen. Then is the body tube, which is the long tube holding the eyepiece and connecting it to the objective. This is the nose piece, which holds the objective O and is the rotating part of the microscope. Then we have the objective lenses, which are attached to the nose piece. The arm is the part of the microscope with which you can hold the microscope. Then we have the coarse adjustment knob which is a large round knob on the side of the microscope and is used for focusing the specimen. Adjacently we have the fine adjustment knob which is a small round knob on the side. Next we have the stage which is a large flat area under the objectives on which we keep the specimen. Stage clips are used to hold the slide in place. At the base of the microscope, we have a mirror which focuses the light to the bottom of the stage. Some microscopes use a light source to produce light. The stage has an aperture that allows the light to pass through the specimen for viewing it better. This is the diaphragm which controls the amount of light going through the aperture. In its simplest form, the compound microscope would have a single glass lens of short focal length and small aperture for the objective. and another single glass lens of comparatively larger focal length and larger aperture for the eyepiece or the ocular. Next, let us see how all these parts work together to give us the final image. Let AB be an object placed just outside the focal length FO of the objective lens. Here we can see a real, inverted and magnified image A-B- produced on the other side of the objective lens. Now the separation between the objective lens and the eyepiece is adjusted in such a way that image a-B- falls within the focal length Fe of the eyepiece, as you can see here. This image A-B- acts as an object for the eyepiece. Yeah, the eyepiece acts like a simple microscope or magnifier. Hence it forms a final image A-B-B-B. 
which is virtual and magnified and is formed on the same side of the eyepiece lens. We can see the clearest magnified image when it is formed at the least distance of distinct vision D. In compound microscope, the distance between the objective lens and the eyepiece is known as tube length L. Magnifying power of a compound microscope The magnifying power M of the compound microscope is given by A double dash B double dash upon AB that is the ratio of the size of the final image to the size of the object. This ratio can also be represented as M is equal to A dash B dash upon AB into A double dash B double dash upon A dash B dash that is equal to MO into ME where MO is equal to A dash B dash upon AB which is equal to the magnification produced by the object lens and ME is equal to A double dash B double dash upon A dash B dash which is equal to the magnification produced by the eyepiece. Now, if U O is the distance of the object A B from the object lens and V O is the distance of the image A dash B dash from the object lens, then magnification M O is equal to V O upon U O. Equation 2. In practice, the object AB is placed just outside the focus of the object lens. So distance UO is nearly equal to FO. And since the focal length of the eye lens is small and the distance of the image A-B- from the object lens is nearly equal to the length of the microscope tube. VO is nearly equal to L. Therefore, magnification MO is equal to L upon FO. Now the eyepiece lens is acting as a simple microscope. So the magnification obtained by the eyepiece lens is given by ME is equal to D upon FE. Using equation for MO and ME, the total magnification by the compound microscope is given by M is equal to L upon FO into D upon FE. Here we can see that the magnification is inversely proportional to the focal length of both the lenses. Hence, we can understand why the compound microscopes use eyepiece and objective lenses of small focal length. We can also say that the magnification of a compound microscope is the product of the magnification power of the eyepiece and the objective lens being used. The compound microscope typically has a total magnification range of about 40 to 1000 x. Modern compound microscopes are usually more complex with multiple lens components in both objective and eyepiece assemblies. These multi-component lenses are designed to reduce the various defects. Compound microscopes are generally used in laboratories to examine thinly sectioned slice of certain organic materials. Various stained slides can also be observed using the compound microscope. 